uh, a matrix, a vector space, whatever you want. Okay. Then you can, of course, assign an object to a body. Just put a label on this object, a name. Okay. We did this yesterday, but let, let's go back to this. So the number 32, which is an object, will be just here as P. P will be this number. Then you can recover, for example, the value of P. Okay? Here you are assigning 32 to the variable P. And here you are just asking if it is true that P is equal to 32. And the answer is, of course, yes. Okay? What we are doing here, it looks very funny because this is completely uh, non mathematical, but, but what we are doing here is to, we have P, we are adding 1 to P, and then this new number will be. Say here as p. So now p is not 32 but 33. Okay, you see now it's not 32 anymore. So this is very very important. This is just a conditional and this is an operator to assign values. Okay, you need to be very careful with this. Then this is a very silly thing but extremely useful. So say that you 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 are working and you for, forget to to you know. Let's uh, say this, this result. Well, you can use, for example, this comma, last. So these points to the last thing gap return. Like, for example, you compute this, this thing, the answer is six, so now n is six. Okay? And also you have last two and last three. Maybe that's it. I don't know if you have more than this, but. Okay. So conditionals. Uh, well, of course, there are three very important operators, not, and, and, or. And then we have comparison operators, like, for example, this, which means different. This is x different from y. Okay, in this form, you cannot switch these two. The order is very, very important. Okay, uh, so if you put this in GAP, then GAP will return uh, true if x and y are different and false otherwise. So let's play a little bit. X is 20, Y is 10. Okay, they are different. X is bigger than, than Y. Yeah, yes. You can also compare this way things that are of different types, like a matrix to a group. Uh, I mean, in principle, that sometimes you will get an answer, but you don't understand what is what is this guy doing. Okay, so okay. you cannot put X in this matrix, Y in this field. Maybe you like, can, maybe not. Sometimes you can get some kind of, of Message saying that what are you trying to do? And some of the time you, you might you might find some crazy answer that you don't understand because deeply gap is, is understanding or trying to do something that well maybe makes no sense. Okay, so this is is risky. You have to be careful. So of course you can you can do this and you can do something like this. Well, other examples, very easy examples. This is less or equal than okay. Just things. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, the first important thing to, com uh, to compare is well, to use this uh, statement if. Okay. This is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just writing an example to, to show you how it works. So, n at the beginning is 10. So, now what we are doing is to test whether n is even or odd. Okay. So, this is the, the, the way we write it. If n mod 2 is 0, then I do something. In this case, divide it, I divide uh, n by 2. Okay? And, and say this as an n. If not, then, well, I just do this calculation. Okay? Since n was 10, the result should be 5, right, of this, this procedure. And indeed, it, this is what it is. Okay? So this is maybe not the best example I can think of, but, but to write better examples, I need to use functions, right? Because, well, it would be better. So let's do that. So there are several ways uh, for constructing functions. So one thing that you can do is to use somehow uh, so, something like a one-line notation, one-line definition. Uh, I think this is like, well, I don't know, but functional thing, right? So square, this is a variable, and I'm saving with this name this function. X goes to x the square of x, right? It's a similar notation to what we are used to. Okay. 
you can define the, fun the function square like this or like this. So square is the function with input x and returning x times x. Okay. So you see here I have this, and then I do, I'm doing this. So now square is this and not this, right? Because I'm using the same variable, but, but the function is exactly the same. So it's really not important. Okay, this is precisely the same. It's just a, a matter of how you want to define the function. Okay. For for very short functions, well, this is very convenient. And you can just use this with all functions, and this is extremely useful. Yes. If you define two functions, I assume GAP cannot tell you if the two functions are equal. That depends. Uh, functions as a what? Like if you define square maps x to x squared. That, well, GAP has uh, an object which is a function. Mm -hmm. So if you define uh, your object as a proper function, as a proper mathematical function and not a GAP function, then you can check if these two functions okay. are the same or not. I see. But you need, of course, uh, a domain, a codomain, and, and a rule, right? Sending one to the other. Mm -hmm. So if you do all of these, then you can. Otherwise, not because. Uh, okay. Of course, you can define functions with no input, like this super classical example, right? So hi is my function, which just say hi. Okay. It displays hello. This is what you see. Okay. And it has no input. And also, it has no output. This function is just printing something on your screen. That's it. Uh, first easy example, let's write a function to compute this particular map. n sends n, so I'm implicitly assuming that n is an integer, of course, and then I'm doing this. I, I, I divide n by 3, and if, well, the remainder is 0, then I do this. If it is 1, this, and 0, I return 0 otherwise. Okay. How do you write this function? Well, here you have the code. So let's call this f is a function of n. If n of 3 is 0, then I return the cube of n. If not, so if n mod 3 is 1, then I return n to the 5, and otherwise I will return just 0. Okay? And then, of course, you play a little bit with the function. f of 10 is this, f of 5 is 0, f of 4 is this. Right? You can have arbitrary number of values. Yeah, 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 sure, yes. Okay, so easy and nice uh, example, the Fibonacci sequence. So you start, you know the sequence, of course, you start with one, twice, right? And then you compute the next term with this rule, right? So let's write a function that computes Fibonacci numbers. So I know nothing, so I just do this. A very naive approach to this Fibonacci function. So what I do is the following. So it's a function of n. If n is 1 or 2, then I return 1, because it is this. Okay? And if not, what I'm doing is the previous plus the previous of the previous. Okay? This is a recursive function. Okay? This is completely inefficient. So, for example, we can compute this. But, uh, well, can you try to compute the, this number, this Fibonacci number, with this function? Do you want to play a little bit with this? Sure. Good, let's play. I don't think it will work. No, it will not. Of course not. Uh, I can kill this. Uh, so, let me share the, the screen. This one. So what I'm doing, maybe, well, I, I will save everything in the file, but maybe later tomorrow you can just, you can check. And now, well, so this function that I wrote before, well, I need to copy this function again. I don't want to do this because it makes no sense. So what I have is in my folder, I think, maybe I don't, but let me just go to my folder, sorry. So in my folder, I have a, in my folder, I have a file with 
this this function. Okay. So the, the name of, of the file is Fibonacci method one. So I'm going to read this file with this function. Okay. This is just the, the function that you, you you saw there. Well, it's just in a file and I'm reading this. Okay. Now I now in my memory I have this function, which is I think Fibonacci. Okay. If I put Fibonacci 10, this is 55. Let's put 20. Mm. Okay, this is what I get. And then I, if I try to do this, it will not work. So start the computer starts thinking, and well, that's it. At some moment, I need to break it because <laughs> I don't know how much time the computer will need, but this is not the way of approaching it. Probably longer than the age of the universe. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's completely crazy. So I need a different approach. Okay? Mm -hmm. no, no. So the answer would be, would be coming, but it needs longer time. Sorry? So it, it finds the value, but it needs longer time. Well, it needs too much. Uh, uh, no, it, it, too many interactions. Yeah. I think it will run out of space. Yeah. yeah, no, it will eventually probably give the answer in principle. Yeah. But no, it will run out of space, right? No, space is not the issue. It's just time. Stack only needs to be 100. Yeah, so it's not the time. Yeah, it's only needs to be 100. Okay. Yeah. It's time. Because each time n increases by 1, it doubles the runtime. Right? Yeah, but I don't think it remembers that, you know, when it's computing, uh, you know, 50 and then it's computing 49. I don't think it remembers that it already had. I think no, it's not, not remembered. No, no. I, I don't know, but I would say it's, it's not. computing 50 and you know, that's not remember a 49. So that's fine. Hmm? Don't remember I don't just time, right? The, the, you only need a stack size of 100, right? Because there's only 100 nested calls. Problem is that, yeah. Okay. So in any case, I don't want to wait. So I'm, I'm going to break this. So Control C, if you have a, not a Mac. Control C, and then this is what you get. I'm inside the break, so I, if maybe I can return to this calculation if I want. If not, I just quit this part. Control D. Okay. And I go back to the the usual thing. How do you break the what do you press? Control C, Control C. For, for you is the equivalent in Mac, I don't know. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, so well I mean I, 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 I now I know how to write this, this function for computing the Fibonacci numbers, but it is not good enough. Okay. Let, let's Sorry. see. When when you break it, does it show at what point it starts? No, no, it, I mean it has some information which is maybe good, maybe not. Maybe you can guess a little bit about this, but, but in general, it's difficult to, to know. Okay? But you can just change something here and try to continue working. It says here that if you want, you can return to this calculation. Right? But it's not clear. I mean, in principle, it's not easy to, to guess where you are, at least not from all this information. So if at that point you type in return, send a column to the Yeah, the yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Good. So I, I now I go back to to my okay. The answer is no. Okay. Uh, so another exercise. This is pretty nice. This famous conjecture. So you have a function defined like this. F of n is n over two. Is if n is even. And then you do 3n plus 1, if not. Okay. And the conjecture is that no matter uh, where you start, which is the n you start with, then at some moment, this interaction will give you 1. This is an open problem, extremely hard. Nobody knows if this is true or not. But, well, we, we write this, this function as a very easy exercise in, in conditional some functions. And then, well, you can test, for example, that. Uh, f of f of f of f of f of i is 1. Okay. Again, this is completely not efficient. It's just a, a, an easy exercise. Okay. This is a little bit more complicated, and this is an exercise for you. Mm -hmm. So, can you write a function that returns 
the smallest integer m such that this happens? Of course you can, but this is an exercise and it is not, I, I would say it's not trivial. Okay. So this function takes two inputs, n and f. Uh, or exactly. Uh, no, no, f is just the, the only one. N. Okay. Oh, f is a yeah, fixed, f is just uh, the this fixed function. F. This right. function for the conjecture. Okay. So are there while loops? For certain. Yeah, 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 yeah. In a while, that's the same f word. I will. I will. Yeah. 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 So then, well, another thing that I want to discuss a little bit is uh, well, uh, a very particular type of object, which is. Uh, known as a string. This is a chain of characters. Okay, so it's an expression that starts with with this this quotation mark and ends with a, the same quotation marks. Mark is just this the uh, well, just a sentence. Okay, or, or several sentences. Uh, and then of course you can play with it somehow, like you play with lists or, or with matrices. So. This, if you do this, it returns the first character there. And characters are, uh, well, they, they don't have this quotation mark, but this, I don't know the name, of this. this dash or what? How, how is this, you call this? Apostrophe. Okay, too difficult. <laughs> the third one is an L, okay, this one. Uh, of course, using the curly brackets, you can extract sub objects right as, as sub matrices you remember mm -hmm. so if you i can keep only one two three four and five so it means this okay this is string or this is just the other string of the sentence or this or i can even just you know renew in some sense the the, the characters right the first one i'm gonna get is the is the number 11 then the 10 and 9 that's it. And you can uh, do the conditions there. Sorry? You can do it. You can use yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, we can guess, but yes. Yeah. Okay. Then, of course, to, to work with this, well, you have functions, right? So, for example, the function string, like this, converts essentially anything into a string. So, for example, if you do this, one, two, three, four, which is a number, an integer, and you apply the function string to this, well, you, you get the string saying one, two, three, four. Okay. And this is the same thing, right? Because as a number, this is the same as this, because it is an integer. Who cares if I have a zero at the beginning? Right? So, this is a list. So, it's a collection of objects, the first one being a one, then a two, then a three. And if I apply the function string, well, I get this string with some spaces and everything. Okay. Well, the same here. Okay. Uh, well, and, and use another interesting function is this replace string. Uh, and with this, you can just well, replace, right? So I this is my original string, and then I replace this by this, and this is what I get at the end. So here, what I'm doing is replacing something and returning a new string, and uh, sorry, a string with this modific modification. Right? So the first instance of that. Sorry. Uh, it's, uh, uh, the first instance of that. Uh, very good. I, I, I think all of them. Yeah, but I mean, you know, if it does one, then it would create new ones. Uh, yeah. So maybe the first one. <laughs> yeah. I don't. It's a good question. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. No, no, I mean, I don't know if all of them are on the first one. For sure, if, if you should relate like this at some moment, you will not see what you did before, right? You modified before. But we, we can check. Now, uh, in two minutes, I will open a terminal where we can check. If I want to replace x by x, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know this? <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, but you can, it, yeah, this is true, but maybe the function will just work. With the rest of the string, right? Because okay. you, you modify okay. something. Like no, but I mean x y, you know, like it could be is like case uh, is gap case sensitive. You know, like yeah, uh, it's not an, you know all of them. It's not completely unambiguous, right? You yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, when I I just type in hello world world and then it says my and it 
that's how all of them. Yeah, all of them. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. All of them. So I think what the function is doing is just you find the first one and you divide your string by two. Then you do the change in the first and then you continue with the, the rest of it. Because otherwise it's not complete and ambiguous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like W, but then you have a string of five W's. So yeah. How, how does it parse it into W, W? Yeah. Oh, so you still have to like here, yeah. 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 No, I mean, you, say, you know, like you start with the string W, W, W. Right. And now you want to replace M or I don't know, 10 W's. Oh, yes. And you want to replace every three W's with something. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, how does it parse it into groups of three W's? Uh, yeah. It's probably take the first one out and then. Yeah, I think this is my right. thing. Yeah. Yeah, pretty sure. You can test this and then <laughs> we'll see the result. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Okay. Uh, okay, this is, well, of course, you have the function print to, to print on your screen. But this is a, a nice function because it has some, some, you can do something, right? It has a very particular way of printing things. So it's not a silly function. So for example, here we have two numbers, n and m, and I'm going to print this string. So print n, then I add this, then I print m, then I add this, and then I add at the end the results of, of the, this multiplication. So oh, this is a smart function. Uh, good. And of course, you can use this function with, with special characters. For example, this special character is uh, means uh, a new line. Right. So if you write like this, then this is what you get. Uh, if you want to write this, this backlash, okay, you just need a, a double backlash. Uh, <laughs> and you have a. a Similar function, but with uh, not using the screen as an output, but, but a file. And this is print2, or maybe append2. Print2 will create a new file, maybe overriding the, the previous one with, with, with all what you want. This one will just add something at the, at the end of your file. This also is, is quite useful, okay? Very good. So some exercises for, for playing with strings. So four exercises. The first one, well, is you need to write a function that given a list of words and a letter X will return a sublist of your list where every word starts with your X. Okay. Second exercise, you need, I, I will give you this function. I'm not explaining what it, this is doing, but essentially, the function is just applying a permutation to something, right? So you need to go to the help, see how this works, and then use this function to write a, a GAT function that shows all anagrams of a given string, okay? It's not hard, but, but well, you need to just to know how to do this. Of course, you can do this by hand without using this function, but it's better to use this, right? Uh, the third one is, well, you need to write a function that, given a list of, of words, uh, returns the longest one. Okay. And then another exercise which could be interesting, at least to know how to start playing with gap, is this. So I give you four functions. This is one function. Uh, this is so this. Just, you mean like, uh, by anagram, you don't mean necessarily things that mean something. No, no, of course, no meaning at all. Just okay, so permuting. Sounds like you have to check against. The yeah, point. you need to make the symmet some symmetric group act active. Okay. Active. Active. Okay. So I give you four uh, functions, gap functions. Well, you need to go to the help thing, to the help of gap, understand how what what are these functions doing, right, and how to use them, and then well, use them for doing something. This is the exercise. Okay. Very good. So lists. Well, this is super useful, really, really useful. You will use lists all the time. Okay. So what is this? An ordered sequence of objects. They don't have to be all the same thing, all this of the same time, right? For example, here I have a list of three integers. 
Here I have, so this list is checking if this is really a list or not. Here I have a list where I, the first three elements are integers and then I have a string. Then I have an integer, an integer, nothing, and the, the empty set set. Just this is nothing, and then uh, a string. So I'm checking if, if the integer two belongs to this list, and the answer is okay, true. And then I'm checking if three belongs to this list, and the answer is not okay. Uh, all the time lists are written using uh, using square brackets. Okay, so. So let's play a little bit with this. So first we create a list with the first uh, six prime numbers. If you want to know how, wh which is the length of a list, of, okay, you can use either this or this function, which is somehow what you expect, right? So primes, I'm creating this list, and then I check the size. Yes? Do you know, I know that Sage has, like, you can just call other case primes and then, like, Take a list out of that. Do you have that something? Uh, so a list of primes, like yeah. yeah, 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 it does. Yeah. I think it is primes. Uh, no, don't remember, but maybe it is primes, okay. but all uh, capital with all yeah. capital. Yeah, that's what it is in stages. Well, yeah. we can just call a call a range. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, to access an element inside a list, of course, this is what you need to do, right? As usual. Uh, of course, using the curly brackets, you can get a sublist as, as before, right? It's the same as before. I have a question. Yeah. What do you mean by returning non empty elements? In the so list? you see here, well, here I have nothing, right? Right. So I have an empty space. Okay. You can do this. So it can be like empty set, empty space. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, I, 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 I don't know if this is very precise, but. I mean, you, you can have objects or even nothing as, as elements of your list, of your sequence. Okay? Mm -hmm. This could be useful. Uh, anyway. So, well, same example as before. This is my list. So the letter A, B, Z. So every element of my list is a string, okay? Not a kind of string because I'm using this symbol. And then I get one, three, and five. So this, this, and this. Okay. Uh, what if you want, want to go in the other direction? So you want to try to find elements inside a list. Well, the function you need to use is position. So this is my list. Where is number five in the first position? Okay. This is my list. Where is number one? It is not there. So the answer is fake. Okay, where is number seven? Well, here, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, five. But it doesn't take the second seven. Huh? But it doesn't take the second seven, so it only takes the first seven. The first uh, appearance, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, so if you have a list, maybe you want to add elements to your list. And you have essentially two ways of doing this. So function, the functions are add and append. Okay? Uh, is there a function that to return to all positions? Uh, I don't know. You can easily write this function. Okay. Yeah, yeah but, but I don't know if there is a function. To return. I'm not sure. Uh, but you, you can easy, very easily write this. I, I will show you. Okay. Okay. So this is my, my test list. I want to add the number 19 at the end. Okay, so I use add. Now I have this. But then I realized that I forgot this prime, which should be here in the middle between these two. Right? So what I do is to add this number at position 7. Okay? And that's it. Now it looks better. You can also append a list to another list. So here I'm appending this list at the end. Right? So this is the result. Okay, and all these functions are modifying my original list. Okay, so you see th these functions are not returning a new list uh, created with my rules. I'm just modifying the list I started with. Okay, this is something important. Very good. Okay. Yeah. 
And of course, you can remove elements, right? So I have this list, 10, 20, 30, and I want to remove the first one. So I do this, then L is this, because this guy was removed, okay? So I remove what, what I have in the first position. Then, well, I can use uh, concatenation to concatenate two, two, list, two or, more, or more lists, okay? So here, this is different from the function append to, right? Because append to was appending a list to a list. So if I have an, a list and I want to append something to it, then my, my, my original list will be bigger. This is different. I have this list, I have this other list, and what I'm doing is to create a new list made of this plus this, okay? I'm not modifying my original list, or I'm just creating a new one, okay? A different thing. <clears throat> well, precisely, this is what I, I told you, right? These two are different. Because one modifies a list and the other does not do that. Okay. Uh, this is a, another very use, useful function, collect. So <coughs> suppose that well, you have a list and with repetitions, right? Typical thing that you want to use, for example, if you compute all the prime factors of, of this number. Okay? So if you apply the function factors to, to this number, this is what you get. How many tools are there? How many trees and how many parts? Well, I apply this function to this list, and this is what I get. I have four copies of the number two, two copies of number three, and one copy of number five. Okay? This is, again, a very useful function. And, and this is extremely important because uh, it's very easy to, to make mis mistakes if you don't take this into account. Suppose that I want to play with lists. So I have a, my list is just one, two, three, four. And I want to make a copy of this. So this is what you would do, right? Why not? Well, but maybe this, this is not what you want. If you want to make a copy of a, of a list, like a, taking a picture, like yes, something like this, then you need to use some function. You cannot use this. So you, this is the, the copy. Shadow copy will make a copy of the list A. So at some particular moment, I will I, I'm making a clone of my 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 list A. This is different. This is like so this uh, is the same list that has two names. Yes. Yeah. So this is what happens, for example. So say that I, I do this. So I have my original list, my, my B, which is A, and then I have C, okay? If I add five to A, then A, this is A now. Now it has a five up there, but B also has the same thing, right? It's the same list with two names. But C is still A, this copy, this picture that I took before, right? Okay? And then if I add something to B, then you see. A and B are still the same, but different, right? It's, it's two names for the same thing, not a copy, as I wanted, okay? Very good. Uh, well, this is another function that also is useful. You can just reverse the elements of a list. Again, here, you see, the confession is that I'm using this, this construction, say, to write it, to, to put the name of the function, and what I'm doing is just to modify, I'm modifying my, my list, right? Not returning a new one. I'm modifying, uh, sorry, uh, no, I'm the, the other way around. This is my list. What I'm doing is returning a new one with this modification, not modifying the original one, okay? So typically, we'll have like two versions of the same thing. One modifying and the other just returning the new list with properties that I want. So I guess that reverse of reverse of list is the same thing as shallow copy of this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know internally, but yes. Hmm. So for instance, if I give this a name B, 
then if I change the list, B won't be changed. B will remain just the version of the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. B would be just this. Yeah. Uh, well, if you want to sort a list, you have two versions, two functions to sort a list. One, of course, will just uh, return uh, a new list, but now we'll sort it, and then the other one will just modify my original list. Okay, that's before. Okay? Well, this is clear the difference, right? One is just modifying my list, and the other is not. Yes. Can you configure the sortings, for example, sorting the increasing order or like decreasing order? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can just uh, you you can put some parameter here saying what is what you want to do. Yes, even you can use your own function. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, in general, this will work for for every collection of objects that can be compared with with, with the sign this comparison. But you can also apply your own function. Or whatever. Yeah, mm. it, it, you need to see how this works in the documentation. But yes. Mm. yes. So um, you probably have to write your own sort function if you wanted to sort other objects that weren't rational. Okay. Well, that depends. Uh, for example, if I want to apply this to permutation, yes. then GAP knows how to sort permutations because then the, what is the sort? Yeah, you know, there, there is a well-known ordering for permutations, and, and he knows what to do. But yeah, in general, if you put just groups, then well, who knows what is what is I think so, but yeah. Uh, yeah, well, this is just what I told you before. Uh, this is another very, very interesting function. Three interesting functions. This one, then number, and first. So I have my list. What I'm going to do is to keep all those elements satisfying a certain a particular property. And this is the function you use for doing that. So you say, so I this is my list, and I'm going to keep all those elements satisfying this condition. For each x, well, x has to be even. And then it's, this is the result, okay? Number is the same as before, but just returns, well, how many times this, this is true, right? So only two times, only twice, okay? And uh, well, this is just complex, right? Which is which is clear, okay? And first, we return only the first element satisfying the condition. This is also very useful. And you see that I'm doing like uh, interesting things in one line, right? This is nice. That's why it will be easy to write a function you asked for, because with this one line notation, you can really do things. The filter doesn't modify the list. Sorry? The filter does not modify the list. No, no, it returns a new list. This is, it, 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 it's always the case when you have this. Okay, one second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, some, some exercise. Uh, this is a very easy exercise. So I want to know how many powers of two divide this big number. Okay, so you can just compute the factors and you can use, for example, this number of factors of this guy satisfying this. How many times two is a, uh, appears in the factorization? Well, four times. You can also do this, right? You need to read all the information from this line, but it's the same thing. But again, why not? Uh, okay, and um, this is, uh, I think that this is the last slide for, for lists, but this is very, very important. How to create lists, right? Well, the function is this, list. So I have an input, which is the list one, two, three, four, five, say. So it means that I'm going to create a list with five things satisfying this problem. For each x here, I'm gonna compute x to the square. So okay. instead of one, two, three, four, five, could you do one dot dot five? Yeah, of course. Yeah. 
Okay, this is what I do. Uh, then I have fear, and I'm going to uh, make a list out of this. Well, put it true or false, depending whether uh, the number that I have here is prime or not. Okay, and this is what I get. This is extremely useful. Really, really, really useful. So, exercise. This is a, uh, well, uh, the exercise is to prove that this number is the same as this. Okay? So, how, how so it's an exercise for, for students. Uh, so, this is the typical exercise for when you teach induction, right? Because if you put an N here, uh, if you try to guess which is which should be the general formula for this, then it is a very easy in the induction exercise. But if you put the exercise like this, well, it's not so easy. Right? Uh, in any case, I, I'm gonna I, I want to solve this with gap in one line. So what I do is first I take the number n. This is my n, and then what I'm doing is first computing this using a one line notation. So what is what I'm doing? Okay, I'm producing the list which goes from one to two times n. Uh, okay. Well, I think n should should not. Uh, sorry, n should be five thousand, not ten thousand. Right? Okay. But but it's not important because this is the general formula. <laughs> so, but, but n should be uh, five thousand. Sorry for this. It's a typo. And then I can compute it. This this thing, so I'm just doing this, right? This is the first term of the list, this is the second, third, fourth, and so on. And then I have a list, and I apply the sum, the function sum to this. So I get this n. Okay, this is the function sum applied to a list. On the other hand, I'm computing this guy, which is just well, one over j for all j here. And then I make a list out of this, and then I sum every element in this list. And well, I check this, if these two are the same or not. I'm using this backslash because I cannot, I, I, this, this page is not long enough, but then I check, and these two are, are true, and that's it. Okay? Very good. Uh, well, we were using this, but range are list where the difference between two consecutive integers is a constant. Okay, so you can do like this: one, three, and then you go to eleven, which means well, one, three, five. Okay, so this is the range. So I go from one to five, and then I use the function elements just to, to list this. <laughs> you can go, for example, to the in the other direction. 0 minus 2 up to minus 8. Okay, this is what it is. Okay. It, it, it has an order, right? It's important to know this. And then you check if this is the range or not. It is, and this is not because the difference between two consecutive numbers is not a constant. Okay, any two consecutive numbers is not a constant. Yes? So the list will be uh, automatically ordered. Yeah, with, with ranges, uh, ranges, yes. So what does the elements function do? Just uh, lists all the elements of something. So it turns a list into a set. Not a set, into a list. So. Uh, so why does it order things? Because this is order. So if you just, I just tried. So if you write the list like as one comma three dot dot eleven with no elements, then it just returns exactly what you wrote. Yeah. So elements is what gives you all the things. I mean, it's the same thing, but a different object with a different printing, say, for example. So a range is not a list. It's a list with a particular property, say, different object belonging to, if you want, to the same category, but a subcategory with some extra properties. But if I write one comma three dot dot eleven yeah. equals one three five seven nine eleven, am I going to get true or false? Uh, yeah, it's a good one. I don't know. So, I mean, so elements it will create the new list. It will order it in some new way, and it will also get rid of repetition. So it's like an abbreviation of this. I would say. Yeah. Okay. So, the, but the printing function is different. Okay. 
But I would like to understand what happens with the range when the offset is a negative number. Like, so there should also be a list 0, minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, minus 8. Yeah, yeah, but this is not a range, I think. I don't know, but I, I, I would say it's, it's I would not. Try the definition that you gave. Yeah, maybe my definition. <laughs> okay, what, one, 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 we could try the following. So define this, as, put this range as a variable, and then try to see which is the first element. Maybe just elements is, is ordering things and not a list. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I suspect that that's what's going on. Yeah, maybe, yes. Really don't know. This could be, yes. I think, yeah. Yes, yes, sure. Because if I want this as a list, I have a different function, which is as list. Yeah, I think it is the okay. case. Yeah. Can you use display to replace elements? Sorry? Can you use display to replace elements? Uh, I don't think, but maybe if you use display, you will get the same thing. I don't know. You can, I, we, we, are done, we can test this. And also, if you change that one to 100 to 1 to 101, will that still be a range? Like, does it mean any interval is a range? Uh, as, as long as this happens, yes. It, it understands. So when I type in 0, negative 2, dot, dot, and 8, um, and ask for the position of 0, etc. Okay, elements yeah. Elements. So elements is ordering the, the things, and this is not exactly the list. This, this is the same, it's different from this. Probably if you ask yeah. for the elements of a list that contains repeated elements, it's only going to give you each element once. Yeah. So effectively, it's turning the, anything into a set and then yeah. turning that set back into a list. Yeah. yeah, so if you do, so this is something that I should do here. If you instead of applying elements, you apply the function as list, I think you will get a different one. Yeah, okay. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah. If there's a way to define numbers in a specific range. Sorry? Prime numbers in a specific Yeah, yeah. I, I think it is prime, primes. Like a, but it's a variable. It's not, not sure if this is a function. It's a variable with, with the first. Big number of primes. Oh, yeah, well, you could just filter the list of all numbers by the is prime yeah, function. Yeah, you can also do that. Yeah. Just I know that in CH, like, there's all kinds of primes. So, uh, yeah, just, just we were playing with this. If you have a list like this and you want to convert this into a branch, Right range, you can do this. This is the function, okay? So it's just a, uh, yeah, you, what, you, what you have to do is to represent your list as a range, if, if possible, okay? Very good. Uh, sets. What well, sets are just ordered uh, lists with no gaps and no repetitions, right? So if you say, if you have this, well, this is not a set because, well, you have this repetition, right? The set, the underlying set corresponding to this list is just this, okay? So then what would be the difference between calling set on a list and elements on a list? Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry? So we saw that elements, calling elements on a list doesn't count most, like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what would be the difference between calling elements on the list and set on a list? Uh, Probably the difference is that you can ask for the elements of a lot of things and maybe you only set up a list. Okay. I mean, set of a list and elements of a list should be exactly the same thing. Like, uh, it might just be the object. No, I think thing. no. I, I mean, uh, so if you have repetitions and you apply elements, you will, you will see these repetitions. No, it doesn't do that. No, really? Yeah. I just, I just it. Ah, okay. So elements is returning the set corresponding to the thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Again, the difference between elements and past list. Okay. Very good. Uh, well, as before, you can add or remove elements using these functions. Okay. So if I have a set, then I can add some new element to my set or remove some element to my set. From my set, or just you, you know, add something to my set. Okay. 
It's the same as, as before, but just checking that, well, you have no repetitions and checks. And also you can perform some uh, basic operations on sets, like union, intersection, difference, are, um, Cartesian products, and we have some examples here, right? I define this set, and if I define this as a z, then I compute the intersection, which is, of course, 2 and 8, you know, the only numbers in the intersection. I can compute the union, the difference, so s minus t, right? I can also compute t minus s. Uh, the difference between s and s is just the empty set, and I compute the Cartesian product of these two, and this is what I do, okay? Very good. So, uh, do you want to play a little bit with, with some experiments or something? This yes. is shorter than this. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Please. Let's play. And I need to do this. Okay. Let's wait a little bit. Very good. So, uh, so, for example, if you do a class list, uh, we, we did this, but uh, no, it was, how was this? Uh, <coughs> now I don't have my, I, I cannot see my, my PDF, but, uh, well, this is the function that returns something, something as a list, okay? So, if L is, uh, say, this list, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1, this is my list. The elements of are this, and as a list, L is of course the same thing as before. Could you bring the window just down a little bit? So yeah, sure. then, uh, if this like is, this? Yes, that's good. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, set this is okay. And uh, very good. If you if you define a variable by elements of L, is that n set? If you define a sorry, like say you said s equals elements L, and then you is there any uh, then we can check. I don't know. So let's check. Um, Use list. Is set. This you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So elements will return the set, then the line set, if you will. Yeah. Uh, good. Sometimes it is very convenient because just if, if you want to, you know, kill all the repetitions or the empty or the gaps from a list, you just apply the function set and that's it. Right? It's very useful. I mean, it's not that you are going to work with the set, but, but this particular thing is very useful. Or if you want to add something but not checking if it is there or not. Well, it's better to use sets, right? But the set is not a list, so if you are no, it is a list with some extra properties. Okay. Yeah, you can you can check it because it's if, list. If we do this, it is a list, but with okay. some extra thing. Okay. Good. So, do you want to try another thing? Cartesian product. Yeah. Let's try Cartesian product. Okay. So say that uh, A is, I don't know, so we have these three elements, and B is this. What, let's see. Okay, this is. It's proper, probably. Uh, no, I don't remember it like this. Yeah, Cartesian, not Cartesian product, but sorry. Mm -hmm. Can you put a set in a certain universe and ask for its complement? Um, well, what in, in this case, uh, it's just the difference, right? But but I don't know if you can set some kind of universal mm -hmm. set. But then if you fix this, then you just use the difference. Yeah. yeah? What else do you want to do? The for the difference of the set? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Difference, I think. So A and B. Do you oh. have complement? Complement? No, but, but, the same. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you need a, you need to fix the, this universal set where every, everything is. Right. So that's why you, you, I mean, you have no complement, but if you have the difference, then you are done, right? Right. 
So there's another state. So say that universe is this. Okay. So the difference from uh, okay, this is the con, right? With respect to this universe that I wrote there. Uh, which which was the function you wanted to write? Do you remember? Yeah. Uh, no, I think it was. You, you told me about. Do you have a function for doing something? He promised that there was a version of the Fibonacci function that actually worked. Oh, the function oh, yeah. that yeah. Uh, replacing the uh, returning all the occurrences of it. Or replacing hello by hello hello. No, 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 so no, this was, no the, the, the question was uh, if you have a list uh, to return the list of all positions. That's ah. the question. Okay. Yeah. yeah, let me see. How can we write this? Yes, but you also had this thing where you wanted to replace x by x, x, and c of that guy, and then so to. Yeah, this was already. Yeah, but already. she did this. Oh, she died? Yeah, she yeah. did it already? Oh, okay. Sorry. So let's say that we have a list from 1 to 10. Uh, okay, so, so it, does, it does an assembly and then it can. Okay, this is my list. So what I'm going to do is to find all places where one appears. Okay, so the first thing I can do is to create a new list, right? Uh, with with uh, so a new list mm -hmm. saying that I have a let me see. Mm, well, I don't. I want to write this in one line. I'm not so sure. It's, is there a way of zipping together two lists and get a list of pairs? Uh, I mean, like addition product? No, no. Just you have a list of length seven and another list of length seven, and you want a list of pairs. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like the, the yeah. You can do this. Yeah. This has size seven. Yes. So I can do x and then l of x. Okay. Okay. Then I have this. And then then, then you can this, filter and then you can. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Right. So I filter the last command looking for what? So uh, the second place should be a one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then one. And then I make a new list out of this, just keeping the first place. Okay. Which is the position. Right. Okay. Well, then you can write a function out of this, but it is there. It's a bit more than one line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was not so easy. <laughs> but, but no, you did you know, like these built-in functions, you assume somehow that the, they are written in a reasonably fast way. Yeah. But these one line things of doing things sometimes uh, don't work optimally fast. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, sure. Good. So, do you want to try another thing? Do you have a question or something? No question. I mean, not directly, really, but uh, you know, these functions that are in GAP, is there any way you can also ask GAP to display exactly how the function is written? That depends. Sometimes yes, sometimes not. If the function is written in, in GAP, yes. Okay. I think it is page. So, oops. Um, let's try with. I don't remember if this is like this. Okay. Oh, what did I do? Oh, oh. You crashed that. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so log to a pet. Yeah, no, no, yeah, then I will uh, do it. Uh, so I think it is this. Yeah. Okay, and then. Uh, I don't know. Three groups, say. Eh? Okay, yeah. You can you can see the code. Okay. I don't know what, what was wrong before, but yeah, you use page source. But but of course, if the function is written really in in C, then you cannot see. Oh. Okay. So uh, sorry, 
this uh, command log to this appends the file or no 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 that's why I just added something then I will just uh, tie up and yeah. I will yeah. put it in there. Is there a way to log in the way that people have had to do so? I think uh, not. Not sure. Don't, I don't know. Maybe not, but I don't know. I don't know, but maybe not. So, do you have another question or something? I can tell you what I'm going to do tomorrow. So tomorrow, the first thing I'm going to do is to talk about files, ports, and, and all of these things, and then I will start doing group theory. Okay. Uh, real group theory. Maybe all the examples, most of the examples will be uh, like, say for teaching, like elementary examples, but we will also do something like more serious and more, more interesting. Uh, yeah, and, and, and maybe tomorrow I can also put the, the solution, for example, for, for one of the problems, like one way, say, a look and say sequence of the piece of the language written by Conway. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.